Good evening and welcome to this exciting live for the Vibrant Health Bundle. I'm really excited to invite Alyssa from Raw Food Romance with me tonight. We're going to be going into classic winter challenges as a raw foodie. You know, both Alyssa and I have a lot of experience with uh, raw food in the winter. So I hope that this gives you a lot of information and tips to make this winter because winter is coming, as they say on Game of Thrones. If you watch that, you know, it's kind of the past now. I'm a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a get got geek, you know. But yeah, we, we got like 30 years of experience between us, you know, most of it in Canada, or at least a lot of it in Canada. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. It's going to be a lot of fun with Lissa. I'm inviting her on. Lissa, what's going on? Thrones, yeah. Game of Thrones, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had the music in the background. It was. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah totally love it love it oh look you at like that hair nice and long look oh, at that, look at that. There. It, is it, i have it this long so i can finally cover my nipples for all the shots <laughs> you know it's like yeah like even when that's the side oh god no oh my god no. <laughs> but oh. i am i'm gonna cut it you know because i'm going home the last oh. time i had erica was when i was when i was in home in canada because my mom's a hairdresser <laughs> Yeah. And so I haven't had my hair cut for a year. So Ooh. I might cut it like up to here. What do you think? Should I do it here or should I do like He-Man, like all the way up to here and do bangs? Or... <laughs> bangs. Yeah, you could have uh, some Le Lissa bangs going on. Maybe I'll call <laughs> you Would you be kind of amazed if the next live we did, I had like your exact haircut except in blonde? <laughs> that would be hilarious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. I I want to do it. Not, you know, I've always wanted to do the He-Man. I have a friend who did the He-Man, and I, I really applaud his bravery. But um, I, I feel like if I was going to do the He-Man, I'd pretty much need to shave it after. And mm -hmm. I'm not ready to that's fair. commit that's to fair. that, you know? No, I know. That's that's a big commitment, shaving. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I guess. <laughs> yeah, especially as a lady, you know? It's, uh, it's even more. I did one time yeah, way back in the day it. when I you know, was doing silly, crazy things uh, to myself. Um, I would like bleach my hair blonde because oh, I went through oh. a blonde phase in my early 20s mm -hmm. and it wrecked my hair. I so it. I actually cut it off like it was like an inch pixie style. And that was intense. That was intense. <laughs> and that, that in between, because like, you know, you, you might do that and feel good and be excited about it. And then all of a sudden it's like that in between where it's starting to grow out and you're just like, no, like, uh, I've been there a few times because I used to shave my head bald like to the skin every morning when I was in grade 10, I think. Um, yeah, but I, I think I, I last shaved it about a decade ago. And uh, yeah, I've just been basically growing it ever since then. And it's, yeah, it's getting down to like Little Mermaid length. So I love it's, almost, it. <laughs> it's almost time. But what do you think? Should we, should we smash right into this hot yeah. topic here? People are in here, 23 people. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I do want to quickly mention before we even get into it, that both of us are a part of the Vibrant Health Bundle, an all raw vegan bundle with fitness and mindset and kitchen uh, setup courses from your hubby and so much cool stuff. I got my 21 day meal plan. You guys got like six resources in there. Hey, you want to you want to fast fire them out? You bet. Yeah. So we have the Tales from the Tailgate oh. raw on the road. So that's for traveling as a raw hey. vegan. We've got Building a Healthy Relationship with Food, uh, which is an informational book. Yes, very, very important. Mm -hmm. Fight diet culture. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nate's Dude Food ebook is in there. So Excellent. that's a really fun one too. And then we have three courses. We've got Checkmate Your Cravings, uh, the Microgreens Growing mm -hmm. Course, and the Kitchen Essentials that you just mentioned. So we've got six things in there. You get them all. It's ridiculous. For like 49 bucks, yeah. it's a great deal. And your six things that's probably worth like two fifty or something at yeah. least, hey? I think it's close to three hundred bucks. Yeah, three hundred bucks. Oh, yeah, okay. so <laughs> it's a steal of a deal. You can grab it in either of our links in bio. Highly encourage you to. It's gone at uh, eleven fifty nine p.m. PST this 29th. That's this Sunday, and then it's gone, gone, gone. So four we four highly yeah. yeah, like four <laughs> days. You guys will want to check that out for sure. So. This topic though, raw food in the winter, you know, I mean, I, I was just saying before you jumped on, I don't know if you heard me, but we got like 30 years of raw food experience between us, you know, and lots yeah. of that in the winters of Canada, you know, Alberta, Saskatchewan, you know, all over the place. What do you think? Is it hard to be a raw foodist in the winter, Alyssa? You know what, to me, it was easy. 
And yeah. the reason being that it was easy was because of my reason why I wanted yeah. it. Yes. Ah, right. Yes. I know it's, it's all about your desires. Like, what do you want? Yeah. If you want it bad enough, yeah. you will make it work. Yeah. And I made it work. Yeah. And granted, you know, in Canada, like the fruit wasn't as epic. Like I did get epic fruit, mm -hmm. right? You know, in the summertime, you get the peaches and the nectarines, oh, yeah. all the cherries from yeah. BC. Like there were so many great things that I could get. And I learned how to be grateful for what mm -hmm. I could get, you know, like mm -hmm. finding that mindset of being like, I can get bananas in Alberta, <laughs> you know, like how, <laughs> how much more grateful can we be for that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did do like a fair amount of more like on the salad -y side for me, yeah. because that was a little bit more ob obtainable for me. Uh, yeah. You know, when pineapples were like $8 each, you're like, well, that's once a week treat. If making that. your mouth bleed, making your mouth bleed <laughs> too when they're picked under right. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it was a little more challenging in those aspects, but overall, mm. I would say definitely it was easy because yeah. it was what I wanted. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can say the same, you know, although I will admit in my first year and in a few years, I had some hardship. Um, mm. You know, I, I felt extra cold and I felt like I, you know, I just wanted to be in the tropics and I should be in the tropics. And, you know, I, I made it really hard on myself, I think, with my mindset. We got a snoo in the house. What's Ooh, up, snoo? Snoo, snoo oh, girl. Snoo. She's so oh, good. Look at that face. She's like, I I'm, I'm a star, but uh, F off right now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, I have know, a new one, too. Oh. He's over in the chair. I don't know if you can see. Is it Jai Jai? It's Jai Jai. Oh. Yeah. He's, um, <laughs> he's cleaning himself over there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she wants to be right in the middle of this, but oh, we're getting comments. This is a great topic. We are going into those colder months. As we said, the winter is coming. So, I mean, I agree. You know, I, I now honestly, I don't think it's easier or harder in the winter, in the summer, when I'm in the tropics, when I'm here in Sweden, you know, people tell me like, like, why would you pick Sweden? It's like, I freaking love it. My, my favorite niche is like between plus five to like 25. I don't really want to be much hotter, you know, it's like, it's perfect. But you know, I got a, I got a bunch of things that people can typically have a hard time with. I, I, I think let's let's just go into each one point by point and completely dismantle it. I think something that is a little bit of a prevailing thought that I heard you say that I mentioned too. A lot of it is mindset, but uh, there are practical tips too, and I think we can go deeper into the mindset aspect as well. So, the first one, and while I don't actually agree with this, which we could go into it, um, you know, people say raw food is cooling and you know that they feel cold and I, I will just before i ask you to go into some aspects i will briefly say it is common in the first year of a raw food diet that people feel a little cooler as they're getting more hydrated and people say raw foods are cooling because they are higher in water content and if you're holding a lot of water well you got more water to heat up and stuff like that but what do you think just in general about the feeling cold on a raw food diet in the winter I have a lot to say on this, but I'll keep it concise. Um, <laughs> before I was raw, before I was raw, I was stuck in diet culture and I was stuck in the calorie deficit mindset where I had to eat less yeah. to lose weight. So I was really, I was, you know, I'd go through these spurts where I would go on a diet and I would be eating like 1200 to 1400 calories a day, blah, blah, blah. Didn't matter how many cooked meals I ate. Mm. I was always cold. And if yeah. you see people who are dealing with issues where they are under eating, for example, people who have an eating disorder, mm -hmm. their body is naturally in a state where, you know, like you can see they grow more hair on mm -hmm. their body. Um, they're always cold. Like they're always like, you know, warmed up and everything because, and I mean, I'm wearing this because we keep our place cool. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, it's like 20, three in Ooh. here <laughs> so nice. it, it's on the cool yeah. side um but it's interesting to see those kinds of people and i was the same i would eat all the cooked food but i was always cold all the time my fingers would be cold my nose would be cold my ears would be cold my feet um and i would just be cold to the core even in the middle of summer even when i was eating cooked food and it was because i was not eating enough Absolutely. when i went raw and I started eating over 2000 calories a day, 
even though it was cooling food, which I agree, I don't agree with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Cause I've been doing, you know, we've been 30 years yeah. experience combined and it's, you know, I'm not cold anymore. No. I, because you think of like a fuel or a, on a train, you put the coal in the burner and you know, you get the energy. Yeah. So when you eat enough, when you eat enough calories, you're basically fueling your furnace. Yeah. So you feel warmer more often. So that that's what I would say on that one. And plus, I love what Dr. Doug Graham says. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, we don't eat food out in the winter. Like you're not <laughs> no. sitting at a table outside in the snow <laughs> eating your salad, right? You know, we're yeah. eating it our, in our home that's, you know, warmed to the proper temperature and stuff. So it's not like it's any different, right? Absolutely. And yeah, no one's living in the winter. We're, we're creating that little micro tropical climate bubble around us. Mm -hmm whether we're putting clothes on or we're jumping into our car real quick and stuff like that. And yeah, so I, I do think that is kind of a non-issue and, you know, while it does take a bit of adjustment and a lot of people do under eat, especially in the beginning, if you're going to get longevity on the raw food diet, you need to consistently eat enough. Otherwise, you're just going to disappear, right? So <laughs> I think that <laughs> that uh, eat less, you know, less is more, I think is uh, to me, one of the most dangerous concepts in the raw food lifestyle. It's like, you know, this is a diet of abundance. And when you eat enough, you know, you're going to be feeling a lot warmer, creating that thermal energy. Uh, I find most people need a couple hundred calories extra in the winter to stay warmer, especially if they keep their house a little cold or if they're outside a little bit more, you're going to be burning through more, right? So, so you need it. Um, some other fun things I think that we could add there. I mean, I, I like to make some warm dishes occasionally, you know, whether it's dehydrating or sometimes, because I, I actually, I worked outside 14 hour days in minus 40 weather as a raw foodist and I would dress warm, but I'd also make like thermoses full of hot date drink. You know, it, it could just be hot dates or hot water and dates, or even hot like a, a herbal tea and dates or <laughs> a carob or cacao powder, hot water and dates and make like hot chocolate, you know, and, you know, it could be fun to warm yourself up that way. Um, and a big one too, of course, beyond just dressing warm, if you are feeling cold, you know, get some exercise, do some movement, get that uh, blood pressure up a little bit and create some heat through the movement. But yeah, I think, um, I think, I think those are some of the big ones. I mean, other people might say, and I mean, I, I would say sometimes too, if you want, you know, like eat some ginger or, you know, add some hot pepper, like, because that's going to get your, your system revved up. So it's going to create heat in your body as well. Mm -hmm. But I think the other ones we kind of mentioned, the big one, getting enough calories consistently, um, you know, dressing warm, mm -hmm. getting some exercise. I think those are the, the, the best tips that actually uh, create it from the inside rather than looking on the outside. Mm -hmm. I agree totally. And isn't it interesting? I, I, I thought this, I thought about this when I was writing, um, past like holiday books and holiday recipes. Yeah. I was looking up, you know, like holiday spices. What are like the, the typical holiday spices? And what I noticed was that all of these holiday type spices like cinnamon and rosemary and ginger and gingerbread cookies and things like that, all of these spices are all warming spices. Mm -hmm. So they're there in that season for us to enjoy, to like help stimulate our circulation and Absolutely. keep things moving. And, and I like that you said, do the exercise. I would be like, hey, if you're feeling cold, get up and do 50 squats. You'll warm up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you'll, you'll get pretty warm pretty quick with that. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, Enzyme is saying some stuff here about uh, kind of same thing, just doing yang herbs and stuff like that. And it, it is it's so awesome how it is kind of classical winter things, you know, like the whether it's the ginger snap cookies and stuff like that that have the ginger. And, you know, I, so I agree. I like to do all those things. So. That kind of goes into the next one. Um, you know, oftentimes in the winter, we can just crave heavier foods, you know, we crave that, uh, that more kind of stick to your ribs kind of thing. And I mean, I guess I could plug the bundle a little bit more, you know, we, 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 the bundle does have simple foods, but also has a little bit more fancy foods and has a mix of lower fat, moderate fat to really go with any occasion. Um, is there anything that you'd kind of like to go into? Because I mean, you are the cravings queen with uh, with your books that are in there as well and check mating and all that. So, you know, what do you think about the uh, the cravings for heavier foods in the winter months? Yeah, that's a good point. And I'll run on the t uh, the point that you made about people needing a couple extra hundred calories in the winter time yeah. for that. And that could be why we crave that more density yeah. 
in the winter just because we need that extra little bit to help keep us warm and it's like basically fueling the furnace right you need to get a little bit more in so we do crave that a little bit and i would say like you know sometimes some people everyone's going to be different of course but like you know moving up to maybe 15 percent fats if that's something for you moving up there but what we find that works really good for us is to play around with dehydrator recipes mm-hmm. and soups, yes. raw soups, and like your stews. Yeah. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. cocoa butter mm-hmm. veggies. You know, <laughs> these are really like hearty meals and adding sprouts, like your frozen, freezing thawing technique that is yeah. mind-blowingly awesome, by the way. Um, you know, it's the cauliflower, the chickpeas, or the lentils or beans and things like that that you can add to stuff to make it more hearty yeah. and more, Eat, like you say, stick to your ribs kind of a feeling when you're eating it mm-hmm. and making a raw soup, like warming it up in the high speed blender. Cause most blenders yeah. these days have a soup option. Obviously yeah. you don't want to get steaming and like way too hot. Unless you're right? freaking like, crazy. Warm... <laughs> <laughs> right? warm to the touch. And another tip that I like for the soups is mm-hmm. if you don't want it to cool down fast, We use ceramic bowls and we put the bowls in the dehydrator to warm up. So the bowl itself is warm. So when you add the warm soup or stew or whatever, it stays warmer a little longer. Because if you have like a cold bowl that's been on your shelf, (laughs) or so it's going to, it's going to cool down pretty fast. So yeah, warming the bowls before is a really great tip. But yeah, those would be my tips for the heartier satiation. I love that. I love that. I've, I've taken some hot baths. I mean, that goes back into feeling cold, which we could add in there. But I've, I've had my bowl of food in in the tub floating. And, it, you know, I think I think putting it in the dehydrator maybe is a better option. But it also kind of made me think, like, you could put your dish in a plastic bag and put it in a hot, you know, hot sink of water if you oh, wanted yeah. as well. You know, like, I used to do that with some of my uh, veggies when I thaw them. I just thaw them in really warm water and then quickly add them and it'd be really tasty like that. Mm-hmm. You know, but... Uh, you know, even kind of piggybacking on what you mentioned with the fat as well, if you think about it, like, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in the tropics or if you're in temperate or if you're in subtropical climate, the fattier foods are typically fall foods anyway, you know, and we'd be eating more of them if we were more seasonal during that time. And that's also when the fruit gets a little more sparse and, you know, then it gets a little lighter for the spring. So it kind of makes sense to ramp up some of those, uh, those foods, those hardier foods anyway. Mm -hmm. And yeah, between that and sprouts and, you know, all those good uh, recipes you can grab in the Vibrant Health Bundle in either of our our links or in the link below if you're watching this on YouTube afterwards. It's all great options. It's all great options. So that kind of piggybacks into limited fresh produce. You know, sometimes you can be in certain places and you find it harder to get, uh, you know, like your favorite fruit or maybe the blueberries went from like three bucks a package to like eight bucks a package and they aren't good or the tomatoes taste like water and you start getting sad and you're looking down more often. Like, what do you think? What should we do there? that's a that's a big one and and like i had mentioned at the beginning that's where i would start to i would default to being grateful for what i could get and that's like i would be like oh well you know i can't get this uh pineapple and the mangoes are like six dollars each and they're super tiny and you know sometimes i could get discouraged Mm -hmm. with it but then i would switch the mindset and start to be like okay what can i get I could get bananas, right? I could get dates and there were peaches sometimes or nectarines, you know, sometimes uh, they taste like wood. So I would (laughs) default more to like, (laughs) I know, I would default more to the apples or the pears. Um, Apples are pretty good. Melons tend to be pretty good as well. Melons are a really good hearty one. Like in the travel book, we talk about how melons, mangoes and apples Mm -hmm. and citrus are some of the best kind of like go-to things because they they're pretty good all around Absolutely. and they don't need refrigeration so and they last long yeah Mango's i love those christmas great. oranges right like the christmas Eve <laughs> peel oranges oh gosh mm-hmm. yeah totally i know so good so i would default to like the silver mm-hmm. lining like always look yeah. at the silver lining yeah. like i'm able to get this and yeah. i'm able to buy this and and i would also like i said default more towards the greens and salads yeah when yeah. I would be in those times. But another tip too, and I would love to share this one, is during the times when the blueberries are $3 a package, 
buy a bunch and mm -hmm. put them in your freezer yeah. so that you have frozen blueberries mm -hmm. for the winter when they are $8 a piece. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then would you eat them uh, rock solid and frozen uh, outside <laughs> uh, in a t-shirt uh, outside of your igloo or what would you prefer to do? <laughs> Side of my igloo, totally right. Um, I I would add them to smoothies. Um, yeah. Or you could thaw them too, like yeah. thaw them out and in a little bit of warm water. <laughs> so funny, the igloo <laughs> one. Yep, totally. I remember when we were kids, we would um, build an igloo and we'd pretend that we were on like alive, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> and we would just be like, let's see if we can have lunch out here. So we'd have like fruit that was like freezing from the ice. Like we had this little <laughs> shelf and we put all the fruit and we had some veggies and stuff and it was like freezing to the actual igloo. It was Ooh. so funny. Yeah, yeah, so you need a heater in that igloo, you know, get that right. ice dam inside there. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel the same thing, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, mentioning too, like what you said with the freezing, like sometimes going to Costco and getting like big bags, their frozen blueberries and stuff, because they often have good stuff like that. And, and it is so much about the mindset, like focusing on what you can do and what you have rather than dwelling on what you don't have. And that was one thing that I think made the winter the hardest for me in the beginning is I was just like, I hate winter. It sucks outside. I want to be outside. I was so depressed. And I was like, oh, I can't have this fruit. I can't have that fruit. Mm -hmm. And it just brought the whole mood down. And when I focused on like, oh, wow, now I have extra time to like go to the gym or go to the indoor skate park or read some books or watch Netflix or, you know, all the different things, you know, and then also, of course, focus on the foods that I could get and mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing when you really come through seasons with this lifestyle because then you appreciate each yeah. season so much. And like, I freaking love the winter season. I, I, I love that citrus. And I, I actually love doing uh, periods of time where I eat more dates and just focus on bananas and persimmons. Like, oh my God, I, I just had a persimmon, uh, a persimmon chocolate pudding today for lunch, which was so mm. damn good. And I'm putting out that recipe video maybe, t maybe tomorrow. I wasn't going to do it today, but maybe tomorrow. But there, there, yeah, there's just so much to be grateful for and each season it gets better and better. So that's that's a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, it kind of piggyback on the, the feeling cold and some of this other stuff, but, you know, maybe not eating cold food, you know, put it out on the counter, let it come to room temperature first. That's you don't want to be eating popsicles one. in the middle of winter, maybe, you know. Exactly. But, um, you know what I always found funny? I never, ever, 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 ever complained of eating hot food in the summer. <laughs> no, no one Even does. Even though you get like super sweaty, yeah. I never complain about that, right? <laughs> no, no, no. People make these things up and then they just repeat them. But let's blast through those. They're like, they're silly. They're silly ones, you know. You know, I mean, I'm sure you've had nice cream in the winter. I've had it too. I mean, I'm inside my little tropical house, you know. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I know. Yeah, I've had nice cream plenty of times in yeah. the winter, even after coming in from outside. So yeah. it really, again. It, for me, mostly, and for most people, it's eating enough, right? Yes. And if you're not eating enough, then you're just naturally going to be more cold because yeah. I feel the body shuts down or, like, down-regulates yeah. many of the systems that are, like, not necessarily fully essential, yeah. like reproduction and metabolism are always down-regulated when you're not eating enough. So that's why yeah. women will lose their periods, mm -hmm. um, you know, low libido, that kind of thing. Yeah, they lose their hair as well. Yeah. Uh, they're just like, kind of like those non-essential things just to keep us alive. So it's yeah. so important to make sure that you eat enough. And I love that you said, it's like, it's not about restriction. This is an abundant lifestyle where we can eat a lot <laughs> and have 100%. fun. I, I, I generally eat until I didn't just like stick a fork in me every single meal. And it, it allows me to, you know, keep muscle instead of becoming like... Yeah, <laughs> you know, like don't want to become a tales from the crypt keeper over here, right? right? So, um, exactly. we got a couple more to go into. Geez, sure. Louise, yeah. social yeah. pressures, holidays, mm -hmm. gatherings, you know, it's Christmas and blah 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 blah. What do What do you think? How How can we make that a little bit easier? Ooh, that's a big one. Um, yeah, you know, for me, I found that you got to go into it with a plan and you have to go into it with your reason. So when I would go to family gatherings and things like that, I would say to myself, 
I would also take it on as a fun challenge. I'd be like, okay, let's see, what can I take? You know, like I, <laughs> yeah, I'd go yeah. into it, not like, oh, I have to, oh, you know, it's gonna be so hard, you know, just like the mindset, right? You have yeah. to take it on as a fun challenge. Like, I'm gonna see what I can take. Yeah. I'm gonna see what they're gonna eat yeah. or whatever. Right? Like, what can I show them? So I would take my own meal and I would bring extra for them to try if they wanted to. I would always make sure that I had extra so that I was satiated yeah. at the meal. And it just takes saying no yeah. over and over and over and over and over again yeah. and to train them because I noticed that if like before I went fully raw, mm -hmm. before that I would play around with raw, I'd do it for a couple days or a week or two or whatever and then I'd go back to what I was already eating. And I found that I would tell them that I was going raw and that I didn't want to eat it or whatever. And after a week or two, they, they kind of convinced me and they'd be like, oh yeah, here, have just a little bit, you know? And then I'd say yes and I'd have just a little bit. And then it trained them. If they ask me enough times, yeah. I will give in, yeah. right? So yeah. when I finally went raw, I was like, this is a no, no, yeah. go for it. You know, I'm just gonna say no. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying no because I'm scared of cooked food or mm. I have to stay raw or whatever it is. Yeah. I would say no because I would prefer to eat raw food. Yeah. And that's just my preference, yeah. right? So after time, after saying no uh, over and over and over and over and over again, mm. they got the picture and they really stopped asking. But you know, you really have to, I find like you have to really shift the conversation away from the food as well. Yeah. And what helped me a lot was if they asked me things or said like, oh, why are you eating that or blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, oh, just because I love it. But you know what? I like your sweater. Where did you get it? it? Or I heard you got a new job. Tell me more about that. Like shift yeah. the topic. Like we don't need to be talking about the food we eat. We all just want to chew together. That's what <laughs> yeah. they like to yeah. say. So it's like, it doesn't yeah. matter what we're chewing, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you could go to a restaurant and everyone orders something different. Like, why are we making it a huge deal that your food's uncooked? And like, of course, yeah. there's a time and a place, and if someone's interested, share abundantly, yeah. make that difference. But if that's not the focus of the event, make the focus of the event what's important, the the the, help, the celebration, the getting together, the family, and, and I just love that. Like, focus on them, you know, like, you can turn it away. Like, if they start asking questions or pestering you about it, be like, you know what, that's not really what I want to talk about right now. How about this, you know, and like, you know, you could even be vulnerable and be like, you know, this is actually a little bit difficult for me right now, but it's kind of important to me to like stick with this. So can we just talk about something else? Like, I'd really appreciate that. And then they're like, oh, like, you know, feel your vulnerability and, and be open to help you out rather than you trying to force them because people will probably feel a little uncomfortable around you too because it's a bit of a mirror. So they might all of a sudden feel awkward and stuff. So recognize that. And it really just comes back to like, what do you want to focus on? Kind of that's a, a bit of a theme here, right? But mm -hmm. you get to choose and uh, make it something that, brings you closer together rather than create separation right yeah totally and sometimes i would stand in power poses like i'd get to the location and i'd go to the bathroom and i'd stand in a power pose and i'd be like i'm so proud of myself for bringing my own food you know like because they really help like inspire that motivation from within absolutely so power poses are really like i'm going to ask about their lives instead of talk about what i'm eating you know <laughs> like so, to so help when you say power pose, do you mean like, you know, like, like a, like a, uh, bodybuilders, like flexing pose? Yeah, sure. like or Superman, yeah. you know, yeah, you're like, like, like this, this in the corner, like what's going yeah. on over there? Do, 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 do. Or you can stand like a star, like take up as much space as you can and just be like, you know, I'm so proud of myself. Cause that's something that I feel people shy away from is the self pride because they yeah. feel like being proud of yourself is some kind of like bad thing or whatever whatever yeah. to be proud of yourself but it's like you should be proud of yourself if you're taking something that aligns with your goals yeah. and it's helping you move forward and helping you feel better and inspiring other people like it's okay to have some self-pride internally Absolutely. right oh, it's it's yeah. obviously not about boasting to everybody no, be like no. i'm so great because of this you know it's like yeah. it's more internal <laughs> yeah exactly it's a mm -hmm. it's uh being pr like having pride for yourself without being prideful right it's exactly. like exactly being yeah. proud of yourself without being prideful and it's mm -hmm. I, I totally agree i mean this is a powerful choice and it, it's amazing and it is setting an example and just by doing it for yourself other people are going to notice and it's going to impact them you, know, you don't have to shove it down their throat or feel like you're better than anyone else. It's just it's just an amazing thing that isn't super common these days. So it just makes it even more powerful to choose it, right? So
I think that's uh, I think that's awesome. And and like you said too, when you're bringing your own food, make sure you bring a lot because some people might be interested. And if you bring a big salad, people might think it's for everyone, but all of a sudden you have a normal human portion and you're like starving and then you get cold and then you're looking down and you're all like, right? So. And, and then you're like, why is it so hard in the winter? Exactly, exactly. And so kind of on that, you know, like shining bright, what about a lack of sunshine in the winter? And, you know, kind of getting a little bit down and, and maybe the hormone, I don't know, what do you think? Oh, that's a good, good one. Cause I did deal with uh, a little bit of that. Yeah. And I went tanning. I yeah. went to the tanning salon yeah. and it really, really, really helped me like five, eight minutes. I would yeah. be in there just a little bit to get that extra just because it was really hard because it's either, <laughs> I mean, in Edmonton, you know what it's like. It's like, it's yeah. either super cold yeah. or there's mosquitoes everywhere mm -hmm. and it's not fun. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's just like, why do I even bother going outside? Even though you love it, you just don't at the same time. No. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. And you know what's really interesting on that note? I never used to like the shade. No. I hated the shade because it was even colder in the shade. Yeah. Yeah. It was even colder in the shade in Canada. But since moving to the U.S., I'm like, shade is really cool here. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're in Nevada. Jeez Louise. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I never knew how awesome shade was until I lived here. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. It's all it's all relative for sure. On a shady day here, sometimes I'm I'm running for the sun spots, but it, yeah. it just depends on your temperature. And you know, it, it is so important to get that uh, that that light. You know, the light spectrum. And you know, we can definitely get low in vitamin D in the winter and start to feel down. Get that SAD. You know, and wow. just feel in that, that seasonal affective disorder, and it can affect our hormones, which it can actually also uh, lead us to feeling cooler and all that kind of stuff. So. You know, yeah, whether we're talking about going on a vacation or whether we're talking about, you know, getting the, the, the tanning booths and stuff like that or a vitamin D supplement or, you know, a vitamin D lamp. I actually, uh, I purchased one myself and because I purchased it at full price myself, I, I also became an affiliate. It's called Spurdy. You can find it on my website too, but all of those things are really helpful, whichever one fits you, just making sure that you uh, they get that spectrum of light and that vitamin D for the winter can make things a heck of a lot easier, right? And, totally. and it's good for your skin, which kind of goes into the next one too, which if, if I, if I went by too fast and you want to piggyback more, feel free. Um, but dry skin, sometimes we can get dry skin in the winter, right? Is there anything that you found to be helpful for dry skin in the winter? Yeah. So I would slather up yeah. <laughs> the lotions. Mm -hmm. I really like Osea. Mm -hmm. They have, um, the, yeah, exactly. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the body butter and the body yeah. oil are yeah. really, really nice products, or you could just you know, you could go as simple as using just coconut oil. Yep. And that works really well too. Yeah. Um, but keeping hydrated from the outside in, but also yeah. hydrated from the inside out. So making sure, I, I made sure not to go zero fat. Like yes. I still made yep. sure to have some healthy fats yeah. in because our cell walls are made of fat. And yeah. so dry skin tends to be, you know, lack of that um, electrical flexible fats like the omega-3s. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you know it. Yeah, get those it chia, get that flax, get those hemp seeds in, some walnuts, you know, Ooh. tropical fruits when you can get them a little higher in omega threes. Romaine you know, lettuce. Romaine lettuce, absolutely. Uh, you know, if you can get purslane in the winter, which you probably aren't finding it, but you know, it's high in omega threes too. And so blackberries too were actually really high as true. well. True. Really cool. And mm -hmm. honeydews as well. Honeydews. Awesome. The cats yeah. love honeydew juice. Yeah. They like lap that stuff up. You know, you know, my little snoo girl, she loves it, but every time she licks the honey, well, not every time, but we'll say about six out of 10 times she licks it, then she all of a sudden goes like, <laughs> like that. It's really weird. <laughs> weird. Yeah, it's really weird. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, because you mentioned Osea, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to feel weird if I don't mention Morocco method, because, you know, like I, I'm kind of an affiliate for them too. And I, and they have some cool stuff for the hair. That's why I'm so shiny and smooth too. But you know, your favorite hair care or skincare and a thousand percent agree it is from the inside out, which is the absolute most important. And yeah, you're so right with the uh, fats. If you go completely fat free, typically your skin's going to get drier, especially if you're in the winter in the dry climate. So exactly. And you know what I've noticed here, even though it's not, I mean, it, it does get kind of cold here 
in uh, the winter. Like we'll get to zero sometime, but it's cold. It's a cold zero. Is that, There's is that a lot Celsius of Celsius or Fahrenheit, right? Celsius. Which, which team? Are, okay, yeah, you're still on team Celsius. Good. Because I'm talking to you, I'm like convert, convert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know what I noticed here, because in desert, it's like 11 to 20% humidity. So oh, wow. super dry yeah. here. Um, I have to drink extra water on yeah. top of the raw that I'm eating. Yeah. I, I find for me, like three liters yeah. is the best amount. So we'll do like, as soon as we wake up, we'll drink a liter of water and then we we'll go for our walk. We'll drink another liter or so of water on our walk. And then throughout the day, you know, in smoothies and dressings and stuff, there's extra water added too. But we found that like just living here compared to Oregon, yeah. I definitely need to drink more water here just because it's so dry. Like you, if you sweat, it's like it evaporates off your skin. <laughs> it's just like crazy how dry but, it is here. Liz, I'm sorry you're doing it wrong because you're not supposed to drink water in a raw food diet because you get all your water from fruits and vegetables, which is like 3D water. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm, I'm, I'm team water too for sure. Um, yeah. Let's let's stay let's stay hydrated for sure. So we got one more thing here, and yeah. it is emotional comfort i know we kind of went into it a little bit you know but uh you know maybe we're looking for a little bit more emotional comfort mm -hmm. due to not being able to run outside and play and get that sunshine and all those other things uh, what would you like to bring to the peoples for you know getting some extra emotional comfort for yourself i know i know you're gonna like this one a nice warm bath with star trek Yes, 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 and, yes, yes, yes. And a cat. <laughs> and a cat. A nice oh, warm bath with Star Trek and a cat. Oh, gosh. That's the ultimate comfort. <laughs> so well, in saying that, it, comfort doesn't have to come from food or cooked food or junk food. Comfort can come from so many different things, right? Like exercising or taking a warm bath or watching your favorite show or snuggling with your kitty cat or snuggling up with a good book, mm -hmm. uh, calling a friend following a passion, practicing an instrument, like finding yes. a way to yes. fuel yourself with a passion or stuff that you love. That doesn't have to do with food, right? Obviously making sure that you eat enough so you stay yes. warm. Yeah. Um, but instead of defaulting to like the super high fat stuff or the cooked food or yeah. the junk food, heaven forbid, um, you start to learn to teach yourself that when you do feel like you need a little comfort or you need a little relaxing, to find those other things that really bring you a lot of joy, journaling, even oh, watching YouTube or whatever it is, right? Researching something that you are passionate about. Anything that is gonna bring you comfort, um, you can default to that. So that's what I would say. I couldn't agree more. I think those are all incredibly beautiful things and you know, the cat, the Star Trek, the baths, you know, finding your passion, your purpose, your whys, all of these things that create fulfillment from within, right? That's, uh, I think those are all going to be just paramount to be more emotionally comforted. And then, you know, get a snuggle buddy, you know, lover, wife, husband, whatever, anything, right? Because that, finding that warmth in all those ways, I think is going to help a heck of a lot. So I, I think we covered a lot here, Lisa. I think this is a pretty jam-packed uh, winter kind of nugget to help keep people warm and much more uh, in alignment with just simplicity, feeling really satisfied and enjoying this a lot more. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I loved it. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. You are such a wealth of knowledge and we are so grateful to call you friends. And yeah, I love that we have all of this to share. Hugs! <laughs> right, right back at you. I'm, I'm, I'm telling that to you in your ear. And, and, and give, uh, <laughs> give Nate a big one for me too, absolutely. And thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you so much, Lissa. Absolutely, 1,000% re reciprocated. And as mentioned, you know, this is the final four days of the Vibrant Health Bundle. So you're going to want to grab it in either of our profiles. Mm -hmm. Grab all this amazing stuff. At the very least, give it a look-see if you haven't looked at it. It's pretty ridiculous. Like 36 things worth like 1,500 bucks for just $49. So mm -hmm. can help you out a lot. It it's out. that time. Winter is coming. You know, hope this all helps you. <laughs> hope this helps you. Thanks so much, Lissa. Have an awesome night and day. You too. Thank you, Chris. Thank See you guys. Morning. As Bye. always, wishing you much. Peace, love, and season of fruit. Bye-bye. Bye. Raw food in the winter made easy. With Lisa from Raw Food Romance. Grab your free raw recipe app, available on iPhone and Android with over 100 free raw recipes, common fruit and vegetable calorie breakdown, freaking raw some food combining chart, shopping cart function, and so much more.